said after the game the other night that I thought was really interesting is he talked about this team starting to become a little bit of a player-owned team. How have you, have you, I guess, what are your, your thoughts on where this team leadership is starting to come from as you get into the guts of the season? Yeah, I think I think, I think our leadership uh, is it, going to need to be one of our strengths heading down the, down the stretch. We've got some experienced players, Adam, that um, have played a lot of minutes for us and been through some real battles. Um, and I think that... Um, I think it, it, it will be a, I think it'll be a strength of ours as we head down the stretch for sure. Um, all great teams, great programs, programs that are playing meaningful games in February and March, um, they have leadership um, that begins to take take a hold in, in February. And uh, we challenged our guys with that and um, they're tired of hearing coaches after four or five months um, saying some of the same things over and over. So when the players can take a hold of hold of uh, practices a little bit more and uh, becomes a player-led team. You know, uh, we've been a part of some teams that have uh, great leadership like that down the stretch, and uh, that usually equates to success. How do you, how do fans see that? Like, how is it, how is this team going to maybe look different going forward that if we're not seeing guys in practice taking vocal leadership or things, but how, how will this team look different than it has if you're, if you're getting more leadership from, from your players? Well, I think your older guys generally, um, you know, there's a sense of urgency that, that I think it's hard to quantify. Um, we saw it with Kata Bates Diop and Jay Sean Tate our first year. Felt it with Keyshawn Woods and, you know, Andre Wesson, Caleb Wesson, and, um, and some of the guys uh, after them, too. CJ Walker, I thought, played tremendous. But um, a sense of urgency down the stretch that um, maybe younger guys don't see the light at the end of the tunnel or the end of the road coming. And um, you know, when you have older guys that have been through b battles with you before that see that coming, um, I think that can be a very powerful thing. And uh, you know, ho hoping that, that a couple of our guys, you know, really step up uh, and give us give us what we need in terms of leadership, uh, also in production. Talking about some of the leaders, the veterans, and things like that, but I'm curious how much of that you want to see more, like in training and in practice during the week, more so than just the game. I think there's this mentality that you need to have veteran players on the floor in big moments. But I guess how much do you, how much do you lean on those guys to set the tone during the week, more so than, hey, it's a big situation, critical moment, we need you to produce. Yeah, sure. Um, it's a good question, and and I think you know what we preach to our players on a daily basis is the carryover that uh, we have in practice um, will usually plays itself out in games. And uh, if your habits are good in practice, and you're doing things with a pure heart and an open mind, and you're you're coachable, um, even through some frustrations, and you and you continue to kind of pound the rock and pound the rock over and over, uh, good things that will happen for you in games. Um, in terms of leadership and how that sort of translates, I think it can come in all different forms. Uh, in practice, uh, leadership may be uh, motivation, communication, connectedness, uh, program values, things like that, that those guys take a little bit more a hold of so coaches don't have to continually, you know, preach these things over and over and over. That's part of becoming a player-led team. In games, it can play itself out in a lot of different ways. I think. Um, you know, some of the, the greatest moments that Kyle Young has had have come through his effort, uh, his energy, and some of the things that uh, he brings that may not always translate to a stat sheet. Um, you know, last year we had a, a guy, C.J. Walker, his experience, um, his calm demeanor, um, being in those moments before, that can calm a team and calm a huddle. Um, and, and you need all of that. Um, especially when you're going into some of the environments that we're going into on a nightly basis. So um, it can show itself in a lot of different ways. I hope that answer, answers your question. Um, but uh, I think what it looks like in practice and what it looks like in games can sometimes be a little bit different, but both very, very crucial and, and both very connected. I want to ask about Zed Key too, just what you're most proud of with what you've seen from him this year from where he was in the beginning of the preseason to where he is now. And Zed has, has come a long way, I think, in a, in a short time. And the exciting part with him is, is we feel like he's got so much more room for growth as well. 
Um, I'm most proud of you know his coachability, um, his decisions that he's made as a basketball player and as a competitor um, on and off the floor that have helped uh, to, to increase his capacity. Um, he's playing harder for longer stretches. Uh, it's not where he wants it to be. It's not where we want it to be yet, uh, but it's headed in the right direction. Um, he's been very coachable. Um, you know, Zed gives us an element of physicality that um, on both ends of the floor that is absolutely essential, as we all know, in this league. And for a sophomore to be doing that, and I, I, I tried to put this in perspective. Jake, Jake Diebler had some stats the other day that I thought were really good. Um, he shared, it was just he and I talking, but kind of putting things in perspective a little bit um, with Zed. And, you know, it, historically speaking, I would put this crop of big men in the Big Ten up with any year in the history of our conference. Um, and I'm sure that historians would, would debate that, but the, the caliber of, of big men that we are facing and Zed is facing on a nightly basis is elite level. And for a sophomore, not, not only just a sophomore, but a sophomore big, to be able to answer the bell and provide physicality uh, at his age, I think that's that's very exciting uh, to, to, to see as a coach because you know what lies ahead. And normally big guys pay their dues for uh, a year or two. Most, most of them do. Even a guy like Luca Garza, he, he played a role his freshman year, not a whole lot. He made a jump going into his sophomore and junior year. But, um, you know, physically speaking, you've got to be you've got to be in great shape and uh, you've got to obviously be able to. To, to play through contact and absorb some of the blows that are coming your way on a nightly basis. And, you know, just been really proud of, of Zed and his growth and more importantly, where he's headed. Speaking of Zed, uh, Zed, Kyle, and EJ all had big games against Minnesota last uh, game against those guys. You guys really dominated on the interior. I'm wondering, you know, how, how you replicate that again and if you feel like, um, you know, the Eric Curry being back for them, you know, big guy inside might uh, change that at all in the second game. For sure, Eric, Eric Curry's a, a, a big key for their team on both sides of the basketball. Um, not only with his size uh, and physicality, but his experience as well. He's been there, he's played um, in Big Ten battles. I know he's battled injuries throughout his career. Seems like a wonderful kid. Um, saw an interview with him the other day, and I know he's faced a lot of adversity, and, and his team has sort of rallied around him to, to an extent. So. Um, what, what he brings their team, uh, it, it changes the, the look of, of their team. You know, they're, they're not a particularly deep team, and you lose a guy like that, and I think that really that hurt them uh, from an energy standpoint, from a physicality standpoint, and from a depth standpoint. Um, but with him back, it's a, it's a really different look on the interior. We'll have to be ready to, to match uh, his effort, and we also know that they're going to be uh, – Reminded um, that we that we did uh, have our way with them in, in the first game in the paint, and that uh, that's something that, that we have to earn on a nightly basis. Um, so, regardless of what happened in a previous game or last game or two weeks ago, whatever um, you know, what what is going to matter is is the team that is the most desperate team, uh, the hungrier team, the team that refuses to be denied in the paint. Um, that's, that's a team that's, that's going to be in a good position to win the game tomorrow night. I also wanted to ask about uh, Eugene because obviously he had his first career start the other night and you know offensively he's not asked to you know create a bunch of shots or anything like that for you guys that are right now but I, I was wondered uh, you know your impressions of his first start and you know maybe what he can uh, do more of maybe for you guys on that end too. Well it, it was uh, it, you know for Eugene you know him coming off of the injury and then being inserted in the starting lineup I think is a it's a testament to the, the confidence that Coach Holtman has in him and the level of importance that he has to our team and our program. And he does. Uh, Eugene Brown has uh, come a long way um, as as a sophomore. You know, from even from the beginning of the season, he's really improved, and I think he's found a real niche uh, within our within our program. And it's something that this team needs what he brings to the table. So. Uh, really proud of, of the way he responded. I think the thing with Gene is, you know, as much as any any player we have in our program, um, he's comfortable in his own skin. He knows who he is. He knows how he can help our team. He plays to those strengths. Um, he does those things really well. 
And, uh, you know, we, we love Gene and his family as, as people, but in terms of him as a teammate and as a competitor, um, I think he's, he is uh, becoming very, very valuable for our team. Um, when it comes to recruiting, Davis, obviously, whether it's Zed or, or Felix coming up, and, 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 but is that physicality, is that versatility, is that something that you want to see at the high school level, or is it something that you can kind of project when you see a guy at the high school level? Yeah, I think with big guys, you have to look through a lens, um, a developmental lens, that you can't, uh, I believe this, uh, that you can't uh, pass final judgment on them. Uh, when they're juniors or seniors in high school. You're not looking at a finished product. Not that you are with guards, but I think with bigs, they have so much more growth in terms of their body, their physicality, their weight, their strength, and that stuff becomes really, really important in college. So um, can you project that? Like, did we know Zed Key liked contact, physical contact, and lived at the free throw line and, and uh, you know, was, was physical and, a, and an active rebounder? Yes, we did. Um, you know, we knew that there was room for growth with his body and, and his athleticism and things like that, for sure. And when you look at a guy, like you mentioned, like Felix, um, totally different circumstance there, but you're also looking at a guy that has only been playing basketball for a few years. And you take that, you begin to take that into account as well. Some of the cultural changes he's had and, um, you know, different schools that he's been at and things like that. So. Um, you know, I think each is a, probably a, a, its own separate case, yeah. but you, you're able to, to know early on, is this a guy that's going to be more of a banger, more of an athlete, uh, more of a hybrid forward, a versatile guy? Um, and I think as coaches, we try to piece those together. Um, you don't want to have two of the same guy, so to speak. In our league, you're going to have to have a physical guy or two for sure. Um, and I think you guys know our program, how much we value versatility from our forwards, ability to step inside, play inside and step out as well. So um, I don't know, hope, hopefully that answers. Well, answers with versatility, is that something that, I mean, it may depend on the kind of big that you're getting, but I mean, when they come in, is there kind of a, you know, a set plan or like a set, you know, okay, we want this forward to get a little bit more playmaking ability or offensively to be more important in the, in the backcourt, things like that. I mean, is that something that you guys have a plan for? Can you project that out even if the, uh, the big may not show that at the high school level? For sure. I think I think you're, you're thinking, um, you know, you're thinking through a, a lens of um, what do we see this guy developing as? Um, and that's, you know, we recruit with certain things in mind. Um, but you never approach it with a closed mind either because certainly guys uh, change throughout their career. Um, you know, Caleb Wesson, I can't tell you that we thought he would take 106 threes his junior year when I watched him play as a freshman. Um, but to his credit, he worked uh, at his body. Uh, he worked with our strength coach who did a tremendous job in the weight room with him. And he worked on his game and, and expanded his versatility. So I think you have to keep an open mind with it. We're always trying to improve our players' versatility. Um, that's important here, but never to the extent that you're trying to fit a round peg through a square hole. Ryan, when <clears throat> Cedric got here, obviously an offensive guy, so I imagine you were working with him a bit, but played at a different level than what he had in the Big Ten. What was kind of your initial approach of, or your initial thoughts of his game once you got to kind of work with him up close? Yeah, that's a good question because Cedric, um, you know, the first time we, we met was was right when school started this this fall, and so that's that's tough. It's it's tough um, from a player standpoint because he's going to be thrown into a, a new culture, a new system, new terminology, new expectations, new standards, and um, you know uh, we were able to tell some of those things on film. Obviously, you're able with the amount of film available and people that we talked to, I think we knew what we were getting from a player standpoint. But um, when you get them here, you, 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 you learn about them. And I think we tried to learn as much as we could in a short time. To his credit, um, it, hasn't, it hasn't gone, it hasn't been flawless for him. We all know that. Um, and maybe what he envisioned at some point when he walked in the door and, you know, but that's, that's normal. I mean, that's, you can say that probably about every guy on our roster. But what I've been impressed with is his maturity and his ability to um, respond to the adversity. And I don't know 
what his freshman year was like, how much adversity he faced uh, at Louisiana. But I know that um, he faced some here early on, and I know that he's responded the right way with maturity. He's been uh, very coachable. And uh, we told him that early on, he's going to get coached, you know, um, and we have expectations for him as we do all players, but um, he's responded the right way. And I think that's enabled him to see what you're seeing. He's going to hopefully be playing his best basketball down the stretch. And um, he's going to be an important piece to our puzzle. And he's got to keep working and continue to get better. I think that's that's the mindset that we always have as coaches is, um, we, we believe that our players and our teams, um, you know, continue to grow and get better in February and into March, and that's something that, that can that can separate you down the stretch. Coach Holman mentioned on the radio today that he's played a big part in some of the biggest wins, the Duke game this past weekend. What what enables him to be big in those moments, or or give you those moments in in big games? I guess. Yeah, he's you know we did learn this early on about him. Um, and you can't always tell this in practice, but he's not phased by the moment at all. Cedric is not. And if you've watched us play, I think you've, you've seen that. Some of the shots he's made in the games he's made them, uh, he's been crucial. There's certain games we would not have won without him. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's probably at the, at the top of, of my thoughts there um, in responding to your question is, is I think, you know, the fact that he's not phased uh, by the stage or the moment at all, I think has enabled him to do some of the things that he's done. And uh, you know, you're talking about an older guy that's played a lot of minutes at the college level and uh, you know, excited about you know, what lies ahead for him. A guy like Bell kind of struggles for a lot of the way trying to get his shot and he gets to that right hand. And then you see him hit the, the, uh, the one dribble jumper uh, to kind of seal the game. What does that do for a coaching staff? To, to see that out of a freshman who did struggle for most of the night and then can just pull that out of the pocket. Well, it, you know, we have great faith in Malachi, um, always have and, and always will. So that part doesn't wane throughout the game. I think, uh, you know, what we saw the other night is I think what Malachi will see a lot is, you know, when you're at the top of a scouting report in a well-coached conference like the Big Ten, I think the best coach conference in, in college basketball, um, you're going to be challenged. And um, adversity and how you respond to that is a big part of it. And I'm not talking for long stretches. I'm talking in game, by possessions, not letting a couple of missed shots bother you or affect your defensive performance on the other end. Um, and we challenged Malachi, but to his credit, um, he really responded in the moment. It's easier said than done for freshmen because they're used to things going pretty easy for them in high school. The amount of adversity they face, not being able to score, getting denied the basketball, getting bullied a little bit, uh, guys trying to rough you up and teach you lessons. Um, some of that stuff probably hasn't happened to that extent. Um, and to his credit, he really responded in the moment. He's a competitor. Um, the thing I think we all have to remember about Malachi and all freshmen, and I put Michi into this category as well, is um, there's, a, there's a process here that takes place and what he's going through is normal. And facing adversity as a freshman is very normal. And we try to remind them of that, uh, normalizing the struggle, so to speak. And um, there is a struggle and, and the path to, to greatness for teams and for individuals um, isn't always smooth sailing. So uh, proud of him and how he responded. The fact that he could come back and have a couple really big plays, important plays uh, down the stretch for us um, on Saturday uh, was, was really important for us. I don't want to get you into comparing performances from him, but you know, you see him have 21 night and 35 on the road at, at Nebraska, but six, but they were all, was, they were three really big, you know, possessions where he scored on. Does that make, you know, the six points just as impressive uh, sure. performance as the 20, uh, you know, on a different night? Sure. I think, I think it's, 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 it's good to, you know, put it in that, in that kind of in that mindset uh, of thinking, thinking through that. But I do, yeah, I, I would say it, it, it's growth. Um, that's what I see is growth. I don't know, um, could he have responded and made tough plays and delivered um, two months ago like he did 
um, in a tough conference game at your rival um, on a big stage in that moment? Um, I don't know. You know, he, I know he did on Saturday, and I'm really proud of him for that. Um, but what I see uh, in that is I see growth. And uh, it's incremental. There's steps to this. But, uh, you know, he's really responded the right way. He's a, he's a tremendous kid. I think you guys have got to know him, know that he's a, he is a high-level uh, human being. He comes from a great family. He's been raised the right way. And they don't want us to take it easy on him either. His family is telling us, hold him accountable. Keep coaching him hard. They don't want it easy for him. So um, when you have that from a, a family, um, it makes your job as a coach a lot easier because you know you're pushing him uh, to be his best with the backing of, of his family. Yeah, I'm a little more over here. Uh, Ryan, I saw after the game a few days ago, I think you did that. Uh, just Chris Holden talking a lot about EJ Liddell and how he should be in the uh, National Player of the Year conversation, Conference Player of the Year conversation. I'm curious uh, your your stance on that and just how important with EJ is uh, to your offense. I know that question gets asked a lot, but just what, uh, what, what would be your take, I guess? Well, my, my take is, is I'm going to echo what my boss said. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to echo what my boss said in most cases anyways. Um, but I, I'm going to echo what he said because I think he's, he's exactly right. I think sometimes, um, you know, things can get lost uh, throughout a college basketball season and you begin to take certain players or teams uh, or roles within the team for granted. And... Uh, I think what Coach said was right because um, the, if, you, if you've watched our team, you know it, it, this is not a guy just scoring points uh, and, and making plays only for himself out there. EJ Liddell is a winner. He's a two-time state champion. He values winning. He makes the right play. He doesn't make pig plays. Um, he doesn't only care about himself. He values the team at a high level. And it's been fun to watch as a coach because He's impacted the game and has impacted our winning in so many different ways. Uh, his passing, um, I know some people have talked about his passing. I think his passing has really improved. Um, his ability to find uh, open men, to make the right pass at the right time, on time, on target, his quality, the quality of his passes, uh, that's something that's really important to us. And um, when your best player is doing that, it makes our job uh, as coaches and my job as an offensive coach, uh, especially, um, you know, it makes it easier, makes it easier. And it's especially important when it's your best player. So, um, yeah, we value EJ at, at the highest level in the locker room, on the floor, um, and around our campus. Uh, but he's much more than just a score. And, um, you know, we, 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 we know that, and that's why we try to play through him in a lot of different ways. So he's 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 been great, and uh, it's been a joy to watch him. Gotcha. Another one of you guys I wanted to ask about was Joey Brunk. Yep. Last week we got to talk to him. We found out about his lawyer background and whatnot. So yeah. that over the weekend. How do you see maybe his meticulous side to him? How his intelligence and whatnot maybe translate to the court? Um, the way he gives you uh, in his minutes. Yeah, for sure. So Joey has had to be very resourceful, I think, this year. And I think that's a, um, that's, that's a trait that maybe all uh, teenagers or college-age guys don't necessarily have. And um, I think uh, his, his IQ has allowed him to understand uh, what the strengths and weaknesses of our team are and what we need from him in those moments. And... He has provided them. He has been an A-plus teammate, an A-plus teammate. He is a tremendous kid, and um, and we've got a long history with him, as you, as you all know, and he and his family, and um, he's been a great teammate. And so those things, I think, um, um, the fact that he's able to kind of connect those dots and realize this is, this is how I can help this team, and I'm sure there's nights where it's not as many minutes as he wants or as many shots as he would want, but... Um, he doesn't. He doesn't blink. He hasn't flinched at all, and I give him. I give him full credit for that because that takes maturity, intelligence, and uh, an ability to kind of see um, how he fits within a within a team dynamic. Yep. Can I just get to meet you real quick? Yeah. Is he day to day, long term? What? Uh, and just from a very. Five mile up. Yeah, sure. So um, day to day. I mean, that would be you know. Um, Sorry to not give not give you a real specific answer here, Wagon, but um, 
um, Michi's day to day. Um, obviously, you saw injury on on television, an ankle injury, and uh, Michi's a tough kid. I know he wants to play really bad, and uh, important piece for our team as well. Um, but uh, our training staff's working with him, and um, you know, hoping hoping for the best here real soon. Is there any update on justice? Uh, no update on justice I, I, either. Yeah, I would say I would say, you know, we're, we're gonna find out, we'll find out more today in practice. I think he's 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 incrementally uh, improving and.